many of the standard generation technologies or wizards may be good at generating standard IPC 7351 patterns. However, they are often very incomplete in terms of automating custom patterns such as this LP LT3032 footprint pattern which has two custom pad stacks inside of a QFN type of package. In this video we will demonstrate how we can automate 90% of the footprint generation and then the 10% use what we call variances to modify the standard packages customizing it to a very specific pattern. In this case I will select the QFNV or variable calculator and I will change the number of pins on the left and right to 7 top and bottom to 0 regenerating the basic footprint. I will now use the associative editing or on-screen editing to change the values directly on the graphical display. Notice on the form display on the left hand side the fields are automatically updated when I click on the graphical display and enter the uh, values for the specific dimensioning. Clicking on the associate of editing I will change the A to 4.0 and the B to 4.0. Realizing that the correct value for A would be 3.0 I will easily make that change by simply once again clicking directly on the value and having the system update the form on the left hand side. Now that we've automated the standard package let's use the variances to select on the specific pin and under pad the pad stack calculator to create a variance of the original pad stack. Let's first start by bringing up the data sheet and getting the dimensioning value 1.07 by 2.575 selecting generate I will generate the entire value for that specific pad shape. It's also necessary to turn on all the layers which we will be editing to, during the shape editing process. Those layers that are not visible will not be edited. Under mark select the mark form and let's select the anchor on the top left corner. Then an offset of 0 0.375 for the data sheet. We'll mark the second marker at 0 0.9250 in the y direction and the third marker at 0 0.35750. Selecting the three corner cutout will remove that specific area. Let's now move the blue marker over to 0 0.625 from the upper left corner, a negative 445 for the green marker and a zero point, negative 0 0.925 for the red marker. Selecting cutout will remove that specific area. Next let's select the modify button. Bringing up the modify, changing the slanting or the pullback from the corner and select invoke in this case to round or if I select chamfer to chamfer the specific corners. Let's now bring up the grid. Clicking on grid visible will turn the visible grid and changing the snapping will be necessary for the resolution and rounding per the dimensioning that we entered in with the path stack modifications. Selecting group select will select all the layers which are visible and have the checkbox items selected. Group rotate will rotate the objects 90 degrees and now I can move the objects to the specific location with the drag and drop. I will zoom in on the specific area and using the snapping move the objects to the specific snap grid. Once this is complete I will take down the move form and move to the mapping to be able to change the specific pin to the new pad stack definition. 
I may wish to give it a specific name, such as pin number 9, or 7, or 4, whichever the pin number is that we will have the variance recorded on, and then add that pin to the selected pad stack list and swap the pin which I have selected in the graphical display to the new value. Notice that I have some overlapping on the left side and I will make the cor necessary correction for the data sheet. The actual value of A is 3.5 for the data sheet and not as we had previously entered it at 3.0. I now have completed the first pad stack variance. Selecting pin number 4 and moving back to the pad stack calculator, let's complete the second pad stack variance. Let's first start with the X and Y width per the data sheet, selecting generate, and under the mark, select the specific corner or anchor which is lower right with a mark offset of 0 0.250 and then a mark in the vertical direction of 0 0.925 and a negative 1.53 with the green. Selecting the three corner cut out will remove the area and now I will remove all of the markers. Going to the next step under modification. Let's define the pullback or radius or chamfer area. Selecting the specific chamfer, I will select invoke to chamfer with a chamfer of 0 0.125. Clicking on the remaining areas which are to be rounded, I will change it, this selection to rounding and select invoke to round the three additional corners. Let's bring up the grid and change the snapping to the resolution of the graphical objects which I have entered of 0005 for the definitions. Under move, let's select all of the layers, the pad, top, solder, and paste mask. Let's select rotate under group rotate to rotate the objects and then any angle move to move the objects to the specific location with the selection of any angle. Dragging and dropping the areas and zooming in to obtain the accurate snapping to the very specific grid location. Selecting the any angle move, I will move the graphical objects including the pad top solder mask and paste mask to the exact XY coordinate pair. Now let's select mapping. Adding the pad stack and I can add a pad stack with a new name if I wish to in this case. Uh, I may wish to change it to pin underscore four or I can proceed with just swapping the pad directly into the package. Notice in this case I have an error where the graphical objects need to be rotated 180 degrees. To account for that it's fairly easy. Just go back and select the group selection, group rotate of 180 degrees and drag and drop the information into the correct XY location or origin of the original pad. Zooming in I will correct for the 0.01 snapping and completing the pad stack I will view it with the original pad stack and the modified pad stack and then move to the swapping to complete the swapping of the new pad stack into the package. I've now completed the standard package, the QFN package, with the two variances or pad stack variances that is often required in these types of custom QFN packages. 
combining the automation technologies of the generation along with the custom editing or variances of the pad stacks, I'm able to complete a fairly complex custom LT3032 part in a matter of minutes.